Yo guys, I'm Jacob Owens, Tom Taher. Um, so basically, this is the first of hopefully many to come um, kind of Q&A videos for the uh, Buff Nerds behind the scenes channel. And so yeah, we basically just ask you guys to ask a bunch of questions and we're here to answer them. Hopefully after you guys see this video, you'll have questions for the next video we do. But anyways, we'll just get, uh, get right into it. Pablo Cruz Jr. asks, what is more important, the quality of the video or the content within the video? I mean, to speak on that one, I would have to say, personally for me, the content, I honestly think a camera is a tool, and really, I think with everyone being able to shoot with GoPros and cell phones and cameras, I feel like there's a lot of people shooting video, and I actually look more personally to the content of it, because I feel like that's really what makes it original. I started out on the T2i, and I'll say, not to be braggy, but I was making better videos with the T2i than certain people were with say like 5D or better cameras. So it's it's how you utilize your tools. Yes, tools and cameras will make your videos the quality better, but ultimately, do you know how to use the tools? Do you know how to come up with a good story? Do you know how to shoot well, edit well, and everything? So really, I think content rules over quality, um, but you get to a certain point where quality is key to take that next level and work with bigger artists. You need a higher quality. So um, it's a little bit of both, but I would say content to start out is definitely more important. Sam Swinborn asks, if you were just getting into videography, what equipment would you recommend and why? Camera, rig, software, etc. Um, as I mentioned before, I started with a Canon T2i and a kit lens. That was it. I just ran around with my Canon T2i filming stuff. Um, it wasn't until I shot my first music video with Futuristic, um, aka Zach Beck as I know him, um, that uh, I really started getting into it and local artists hit me up for music videos. And I really just had the T2i and the kit lens. And then with each, you know, each job I did, I would save that money and buy a better lens or a shoulder rig and just kind of kept growing the gear. Um, and then eventually, you know, I had just kind of a large pile up of, you know, equipment. And I don't know if uh, what Tom... Yeah, I mean, I would actually have to add the same. I, I started out on a DSLR and I think that's kind of what the question's asking is like yeah. what uh, gear you'd want to get into. And, you know, we'll probably touch about touch on camera, you know, recommended camera purchases later in another video. But to kind of like, you know, um, touch DSLR. on it a second. Yeah, DSLR is definitely a good look. And I feel like that gets you at any price point. If you've got $500, if you've got $3,500, like you can get a DSLR. Like that's you know, you can find one for exactly. whatever price point and, you need. And you can make stuff on a DSLR look great. You know, it, it's um, it's a great camera to start out with, but you can also do really good stuff with it. So honestly, starting on a DSLR, the same kind of settings from ISO and shutter speed and, you know, shutter angle, they all apply to yeah. the Arri Alexa and the RED. So starting on a camera that kind of supports these kind of... The only, the only difference is you're... Shutter speed, aperture, you know, color balance, all this throughout any sort of camera remains the same. It's just a matter of the, the different buttons and you know the functions exactly, with each yeah. camera and it grows a little more advanced. But that basic knowledge applies through all the cameras and when you're shooting anything. So I think starting with a DSLR is a great way to start out. It's what I started with. Started with the T2i, moved to a 5D, then moved to a, uh, my Sony FS700, and now you know I'm shooting uh, with Tom and, and his Red. So I would recommend starting with the DSLR. Great, you know, starting camera. Touching on rigs, um, I shoot with a Red Rock Micro. That sets you back probably about 800 bucks. I can recommend. There's a site called Jack 35 and Express 35, and they make those same parts, the same rods and shoulder rigs and shoulder grip. For a lot cheaper and I know on eBay you can find a couple shoulders I'll have some links below but Express 35 you can get a shoulder rig for probably under three or four hundred bucks and it'll support most uh, DSLRs and actually I've seen some people throw a red on there so um, yeah hope that helped. Next question is from Adrian Outlaw he asked do you do re-edits um, that he had a video for a client with some scenes um, and basically the artist wanted to take out those scenes but it, the video was already edited um, yes, in my contract that I deal with artists, I have that they can have up to a total of three edits, which is the initial edit that I send them, and then they get two additional re-edits. So I send them the first edit, they give me their changes and what they would like differently, etc. I send them that, that's now their second edit, and then from there they give me their final notes and changes and what to adjust and that is their third and final edit. And from there, I then color the video and send it to them and that's it. Adrian Outlaw asks also, do I charge extra to give the client a digital download of the video? 
No, because they're paying for the video and for you to make the video, so you can't charge extra for that video for them to download. The video is the video. Um, once the video is finished, you have to deliver it to them in any way. Um, I usually do a digital download, but I don't charge the client extra for that. Another question from Adrian Outlaw, he has a several here. Uh, do you put every video on your channel? If not, do you charge more? No, I do not put every video on my channel. When I was starting out, I used to because everything was very small budget, low level artists. But as you get higher and start dealing with bigger artists, they have their own channels, they have their own management, they have their own labels. So the video you do for them goes to that, it goes on their channel, it, goes, it belongs to the label, it doesn't belong to me. So I can't upload it to my channel. Now there are a few artists that I work with that allow me to post their videos on their channel, like Futuristic, me and him have a relationship where we post all his videos on the Buff Nerds channel. Um, but yeah, as far as once you start working with bigger artists, the video belongs to them and they can do with it what they please, but I do not upload it to my channel. Unless they give me permission, you know, weeks or months later to upload it just so people on my channel can see it. Last one that he asked is what made you give up on a DSLR? And really for me, it was, uh, you know, moving from a 70 to a Red Scarlet and now a Red Epic. Um, I found the lenses was the selling point. Um, you know, we actually just shot a Jesse McCartney video and the project called for shooting, you know, on, you know, sharper glass. And that really, you know, is only able on cameras that can support that kind of glass. So glass is one selling point. And then really, you know, you're paying more money for a camera. It's got better dynamic range and slow motion. And, you know, shooting music videos and commercials, like having those features, is just something that DSLR doesn't do. So for me, that was kind of the tipping point for moving from a 7D to a red, or, you know, in your case, maybe a black magic or something at a higher level. So. And then, yeah, I'm sure like the same for you and your, you know, FS moving from a 5D, right? Yeah, so for me, um, it was just, you start, like you said, you start dealing with clients that want that top level quality. You're not gonna be able to sh shoot a video for Jesse McCartney with a DSLR. It's just not gonna happen. Like, you won't get the job, you won't shoot the video, and you wouldn't want to. You, you wouldn't wanna shoot, you know, a $30,000 video on a DSLR. Um, and the label wouldn't want that either. And so, so yeah, at some point, when you're dealing with a higher level, you, you have to make the jump. Um, it's not that I gave up on it, it's just, it's just how it is. Next, from Lewis McLeod, he asks, how are you gaining access to larger paying clients? That um, comes with just, I say, um, shooting good videos, and from there, when I, you know, I started, I started reaching out to people on Facebook. So one of the people I actually reached out to was DY. Hit him up on his Facebook, um, said I could, you know, make some videos for him. He hit me back, and we started making videos. From there, you know, once I started putting out video, video with DY, other bigger artists started asking me about videos, and it's it's just you 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 keep building. You know, you do one video, these bigger artists recognize that because that artist is a little bigger. Well, now you do a video for that artist, and there's bigger artists than that person recognizing the video. So it just it just kind of keeps building um, until you're doing, you know bigger things, it's, and so much of it is just connections and who you know. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I guess yeah. that, that kind of answers that, I don't know, I hope that helped. Um, another camera question from Jack, let me know if I'm mispronouncing this. <laughs> Hajuski, Hajuski! It's a pretty awesome name. Um, is it better to purchase a serious DSLR, like a Canon 1DC, or go with a cinema camera, like the RED camera, Blackmagic Cinema, or Sony FS700? And I think that's a pretty circumstantial question. It really is what you need. Um, yeah. Actually, I you know follow uh, some of the other crew that we've worked with, and we've shot some aerial footage with Bird's Eye Production, and they went the route of getting the Canon 1DC, and that's just because they're flying a helicopter and they need a small camera to fly in the rig, and like for them, it just didn't make sense to fly a bulky red. So yeah, so it's, it just tailors to what your needs are, you know. And if you're shooting low budget videos, you don't need a red. So. Yeah, I guess it just goes back yeah. to what you need, what you're doing at that point in time. Um, you know, if you're shooting, if you're starting to shoot all these bigger budget videos, you might want to go for a RED or a Canon 1DC. And some do um, more than you know. I know the DSL or the Canon 1DC doesn't do as high a slow motion as the RED, and you know, uh, the Black Magic doesn't do as high slow motion as the Sony. So one of one of the reasons I got the Sony FS700 is because of the reason it could do just extreme slow mo up to like 240 frames. So that was a selling point for the camera. I I'm a big fan of slow motion and time remapping, time remapping, um, and you know, speeding things up, slowing it down, reversing. So I knew like 
that was gonna be a feature on that camera I would use a lot, and hence one of the reasons I bought that camera over, say, you know, a Red Scarlet or a Black Magic that can't do those, um, you know, kind of higher frame rates. Higher frame rates, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Kinda wants to be a buff nerd. <laughs> Jimmy G asks, rent camera gear or try and save up or buy your buy possibly a mix of both um at this point at my stage and i think tom can agree um, we kind of have the essentials of what we need and we when budget allows for shoot shoots we rent gear um yeah i mean so yeah. literally if someone were to call us today we own the camera the lenses the batteries i mean we would be able to shoot but then when we want to have some fun we'll rent those lenses or better versions of them or more lights or you know so but we have the essentials i recommend buying the essentials because when someone hits you up bro what are you doing tomorrow shoot a video and you're like well shit, i gotta go rent some i mean you want to own yeah. at least some of the gear you yeah know? i mean i own tripod um shoulder rig camera lenses some um, kino some, some kino arrows, lights, yeah. gels um i kind of rent a wide variety or Rent. I own a wide variety of stuff and then for the bigger things, bigger shoots or where we want to try something different, yeah, we, we go out and rent some stuff. Jesse Ray Diamond asks, kind of sounds like a stripper name, do you think of all the concepts for the videos or do you just show up and shoot? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's kind of a bit of everything. Um, depending on the artist, there are definitely some artists who know exactly what they want. Um, we talk on the phone and they're like, this is what I want. And basically I'll then kind of like throw ideas at them as well. And we kind of go back and forth with the idea they have and just kind of flush it out, make it better, bigger, or how we could do something, some things better. Other artists have no idea what they want at all. And it's solely on me to come up with the treatment, the ideas. And then other times it's a bit of both where it's like the artist has some ideas, but they're not all there. And then I have some ideas and we kind of combine them. Um, and go from there. So it's just, it's really everything. I've done everything from, I do start from ground zero and there's other times where I, um, you know, the artist already knows exactly what they want. And then there's sometimes where I do really low budget shoots where all I do is show up and shoot and they have everything planned and organized. But for the bigger stuff, like we, you know, I write the treatment, we plan it out from ground zero, we go and rent props, we do all the production elements and the artist literally just shows up the day of the shoot and we shoot. And we'll usually have one or two production meetings, a location scout, a tech scout, where we'll just kind of see what the location is, where the power is, what we'll need. I mean, for Jesse, we, I think, met up four or five times, saw the house twice. So, I mean, we were, you know, I mean. Yeah, for the Jesse McCartney video, we did a lot of pre-planning and production. Me and Tom met up several times to talk about it. You know, wrote out, wrote out kind of like some shot lists, went to the location, location scouted, et cetera. So, you know, it was a bigger shoot, so there was a little more involved to it. We're not gonna do that for a budget that's you know this big you know it's just, yeah, it just it really depends on the artist the budget and whatever you know what they have going on so joshua booth joshua that, booth ask about a little bit of b-roll footage how do you approach b-roll footage do you shoot whatever's in the location that looks good or does it have to relate to what you're filming um a recent example i think that utilizes some b-roll footage that we shot was a video we shot for this artist named Jonas link in the description below and I don't know I mean if you show up to location and it just looks really cool in our instance we saw some broken houses and some broken you know it just it invited itself to be shot I mean I would have shot it regardless it looked awesome but yeah I mean if the story calls for you know some you know and I think b-roll can include slow motion or you know anything around the area so I mean use your judgment call but it always hurt doesn't hurt I mean I, I think on this on this Jonas video we shot um, basically the location lended itself to just a lot of cool, interesting B-roll. It was like a bunch of just broken down houses and kind of trash that looked like art and graffiti and whatnot. And we literally just, you know, pulled off a bunch of B-roll, the, the water rolling in, you know, the, the, whatever, the tapestry hanging from the roof, you know, different things laying on the ground. And then obviously a bunch of slow-mo, um, you know, B-roll of uh, Jonas kind of just vibing out to the music where he's not performing. Um, so yeah, I mean, B-roll, it's definitely something you want to get a lot of, so you don't just have a strictly performance video because that can get very repetitive. Having something to kind of insert here and there to break up the performance aspect of it is definitely um, the route you want to go. Um, and for editing, I'm sure. It helps editing, you. editing helps because yeah. then you don't stretch yourself too thin with, you know, crap, I don't have enough footage. Um, so always get as much B-roll as you can. Um, it'll, it'll save your butt. Um, 
and saving time. And so shoot B roll. And... Shoot B roll. Jorge prophecy. Or Jorge wow. prophecy via. I guarantee that's not your middle name. <laughs> uh, Asks lenses. Which kind do you use and why? <laughs> Me, I own a set of Zeiss lenses, um, Zeiss 21. Oops, missed my thumb. Zeiss 21, Zeiss uh, 50, um, and actually, no, I have a Canon 70 to 200 L series. Um, those are the three I have. I used to have a set, uh, a couple Zeiss had a 50 and an 85. Um, for more running gun shoots, I have a 24 to 70 L series, which kind of works well with the 70 to 200, kind of covers the bases. And I recently just purchased a set of uh, like vintage 70s like Nikkor lenses, which are... I, I would highly recommend um, either Zeiss lenses or Canon L-series lenses. Um, Honestly, the kit lenses work for really, I, I don't know, I've noticed side by side they're not as sharp. I mean, if you're buying it with the kit, it gets you out the door and you've got a couple focal lengths. But I definitely recommend buying if you have the, the budget. Um, I'm going to put a link below. It's called Rokinon lenses. They're That's fairly cheap. I'm just going to say that. Stole it from you, but <laughs> you can literally get an 85 millimeter, which is very, very comparable to Zeiss's sharpness for about two to 300 bucks. They have a 16, a 24, a 35. They don't have a 50, and they have an 85. So honestly, that could get, that's a little, that's a prime lens that you can get. Yeah, so check, check down here. B&H or Amazon, there's going to be a link in this description below. And uh, yeah, but I mean, honestly, L-Series Zeiss with these Rokinons are definitely a good look for you. And yeah. yeah, and then that's that's kind of before you step up into the big body lenses. But yeah, Zeiss, Canon L-Series, if you have the budget, if you don't have the budget, the, yeah. the Rokinons. So. Exactly. All right, so that is the end of the uh, question and answer video. Um, thank you guys for all your questions. Um, you know, email me, here's my email. Uh, we'll put it in the description below. Email us um, any questions you may have for future Q&A videos. With this channel, we plan on just uploading, you know, a wide variety of different behind the scenes videos on set stuff behind the scenes, as well as stuff like this where we're talking to you guys. Um, and just, you're gonna see a wide variety of stuff, as well as some new merchandise coming soon, some Buff Nerds merchandise. Um, yeah, don't hesitate to ask us some questions, man. If you see a camera, a lens, or a light in some of our music videos or in some of the behind the scenes, ask us. We'll tell you. I mean, that's what we're here for and that's what we want to help. So um, subscribe to this channel, um, like us, Facebook us, tweet us, do all that stuff. All the information that you need to know is in the description below. Check out all that stuff. Check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good jazz. And hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this channel because we're going to be putting out awesome behind the scenes stuff. And everyone loves awesome behind the scenes stuff. I love awesome behind the scenes stuff. Who so I know right? you do too. So you know that's what, that's what we're here for. And hopefully we can help you guys and show you guys a good time and help you guys grow. Peace. <laughs>